he thinks he can fight like his granddad. Enough! Go on, get you going. The only way to protect yourself is to fight. He ain't got it in him to do what you did. Give him time. It's just going to be a prize fighter. It's indefinable. Ladies and gentlemen, one Jim Belcher. You'll be a stronger, more experienced fighter just using your noggin. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Nerdly Out Loud, the official podcast of nerdly.co.uk, your favourite British home for all your news, reviews and exclusive interviews. We like to cover all kinds of movies from the big budget to the low budget to the no budget with a special keen interest on a lower end of the scale. And tonight I am joined by, I mean, let, let's do a little history lesson here. So uh, the 4th of August, 2017, this was the last time that I sat down with Mr. Matt Hookings and we were talking about his movie, his leading role movie, uh, Winter Ridge at the time. And yeah, man, that was like five years ago. How are you tonight, Matt? Yeah, five years goes goes quickly. Five, five, five feature films in five years, but it feels like... Uh... Feels like I haven't stopped since we last spoke, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm holding up, you know. I'm I'm still alive, which is good. <laughs> well, well, that's the thing because you you didn't exactly disappear or go away anywhere because you know um, some other movies that came along that I've I've had the pleasure of reviewing or or at least seeing. You know, um, 2018, you you produced one of my favorite movies of that year. You produced um, I Love My Mum, which. I just thought was a, a wonderful, wonderful movie. Well, one of my favourites of that year, f- for sure. And then last year, the uh, the sleeper hit, hit cult movie, The Seed, you produced that as well. So you've definitely been grafting, just grafting on, on a lot of other people's projects and whatnot, and then and then let's get Prizefighter going. Yeah, just um, slowly slowly burning away on Prizefighter while I was doing these other projects. I did um, I did another, another project as well where I produced and, and played a, a like a semi-lead role in uh, Grand Duke of Corsica with Tim Spurge, yeah. which, which was in between and came out, you know, just after COVID kind of hit. So um, it's been crazy. I mean, I, you know, I just, Prize Fire has been with me for so long and just, um, I just, I just think, you know, you know, never given up on it and just kind of pushing it forward. And whenever I could get a moment, just, um, you know, press it, press it forward and, and hope that it could, it could get made and then just, um, you know, just committed every, <laughs> every bit of uh, heart and soul to it and, and managed to get it made and it's uh, it's coming out July you know end of this month July 22nd on Amazon so here we are and, and I'm buzzing for it because um, I mean I'll, I'll be completely honest with you as well Matt when, when the last time we were talking and you were telling me about this this passion project that's been bubbling away this prize fighter movie which I could clearly see was a movie that if anybody's going to make the movie they want to make this is the movie Matt's going to make and it's going to get made however Martin, I always mess this guy's last name up. Martin Kashkos, so Corsa, <laughs> uh, Ju- Julian Glover, Stephen Burkoff, Ray Winston, Russell Crowe. Were these names in your head when you first told me about this movie? I mean, look, you know, it, it's it's um, the cast is, you know, it's from a dream list, and you know, there's so many, you know, Jodie May and and yeah. fighters that have fought. Mike Tyson, Julius Francis, um, you know, uh, Joe Egan, um, lo- loads, loads of friends, loads of people that, um, you know, I've been been wanting to do something properly with for a long time. Michael McCall, Nolene, Glenn, like just the list goes on. Mm. Um, Stanley Morgan, it, it just, it was just a dream list of people. And I just, I, you know, in, in the, in the utmost, um, you know, without, without any ego, I just, I just, I had this dream list, and I just didn't give up until they all said yes, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and you know, working with friends is obviously a lot easier because they know who I am, and and, and lots of people like yourself knew about the project. You know, mm. I was walking around in Cannes recently um, for the film festival, and people shaking my hand from five, six years ago, seven years ago. You know, saying I can't believe you got it made. Well done, amazing. So you know, the, the, the pulling in the friends, w- 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 you know, was a little bit easier. But then you know, Julian Glover saying yes, we I'd already done a film with Julian. Very, very, you know, such a wonderful human, love that guy. And just went up the list. And you know, Jodie May is the mother. Okay, you know, really, um, Jodie's done a ton of stuff, and, and you know, 
super super lovely woman and just you know okay that's great and then you move you know you move kind of towards the trainer and, and trying to get Ray Winston and, and then Ray says yes and it just it was just it was the perfect list that I don't think you know they're not just cast members who are in this because you know their agent put them forward for a job they, they all kind of got really committed and behind my story and trusted me as well in lots of things which was great so th there's there's that aspect and, there's, and then there's the other aspect of them being perfect for the role it, you know you see a lot of films where you see a really famous person or even you know someone play a player play, play a part that yeah you just don't know why they're not right for it or they could have just done that for the money or for the, for you know for, for, for different yeah. reasons but you know these people they all just they all just fit so well into these roles and having ray winston as a you know a bullshy Lon london you know uh, boxing trainer from the 1700s you know ray was an ex yeah. and having russell crowe as the you know as a, as a kind of washed up drunken you know gra grandfather and boxing figure i mean you just couldn't you aren't you honestly in a weird way you couldn't write it because they're all really really perfect for the role and do you know what they're all they're all you know they're all super famous and super amazing in their own right and they are all on their a-game in this i mean you know some of the stuff i mean russell's gonna blow everyone away uh, and he's russell pro anyway and he always blows everyone <laughs> away but he's he's playing a really really good part and ray is like ray winston in this film is phenomenal like he has done you know ray's done a lot of stuff um and he's done some really really interesting sort of stuff that you know, veers away from his, you know, sort of usual stuff that he does. But he's he's just phenomenal. Everyone is really on their A game in this film, which um, which is a nod to them. And you know, being me playing Gem and being at the front of it, trying to <laughs> trying to try to also match it is a you know was obviously was a was a challenge, but also excitement at the same time. But if there's any way you're going to match someone's talent or try and get up to that next level of talent or or you know reach that level putting yourself in amongst Russell Crowe and, and Ray Winston and Jodie May I mean that's that's absolutely where you need to be to get there you know it's it's great I love I loved seeing the cast that you've got for this film yeah it's it's I just keep saying to people just keep strolling down that IMDB because when you think it's going to stop you just think oh it's that person oh it's that person it's it's you know they're really really great and everyone brought something different you know you, you step on set with someone like Julian Glover who's just a you know he's just a he's just a veteran and he's just an absolute legend and then and then you know, Marton Kosak comes in and he just lights up every scene. He's oh, just, he always does anyway. Even even Julian looked at me the first time I saw him and he went, who is that actor? He is phenomenal. <laughs> and he just turned on a scene and then doing scenes with like Stephen Burkhoff. I mean, mm. you know, he just, that, that was really um, a, an awe moment actually. You know, a lot of famous cast, a lot of really cool people on the film doing a really intense, you know, kind of prison scene with Steve Burkoff was just like, wow, this is this is what this is what the the art is about. And then you know, Ray has a really nice sense of um, humor, and the way he looks after you and helps you is really nice. And you know, and you, and Russell's presence is just uh, it, it, again, it's, it's it's phenomenal. He just completely owns it. And just everyone was really kind. Everyone was really kind and nice. Um, you know, working with Jody as well was, was incredible. I mean, yeah, yeah, just just really, really lucky to be blessed with a, a cast that I had a had a dream list of, of going to. I mean, they didn't all say yes at first. Had to kind of go back and push a couple to say yes, but um, yeah, just ended up with the dream cast. Well, I mean, enough about them because we can talk about them all day, and and we will a little bit more. But um, that I first heard about this movie five years ago, as I've already said a couple of times now. But this movie's been living with you for a good 10, 11 years, you know, like this the idea of Prize Fighter and the story is of Prize Fighter. What was it about the story of Jem Belcher that made you want to tell it? And also, kind of like, what was it that made you think that you should be the one to tell it? Yeah, it's a good question. I think ah, it, it, there's, there's a lot of a lot of things that drove me to this. I mean, first of all, I, I didn't pick up the story and just went, okay, I'm gonna write about this guy and I'm gonna play the lead. It, it, it formed and developed over time. Um, the the first part of the question on, on why Jem Belcher, I, I was drawn to this guy's story who, you know, no one had heard anything about him, not even diehard boxing fans. He's a very unforgotten hero. 
um, of his time. And yet he had this charisma, he had this charm, he had this Muhammad Ali-esque um, rem reminiscence about him where he spoke ahead of his time, he acted ahead of his time, and he had this scientific approach to boxing, which was just completely, you know, um, out of, out of a scene, a scene of what was going on at the time. He, he talked about boxing as the sweet science and using the sport and the agility and the mindset to beat your fighter rather than just being big and strong. So that hooked me. Um, you know, the fact that no one had heard anything about him was like, okay, well, this could be something different. And then the connection with me, I mean, I started, you know, th this this story came from my dad. My dad was a British heavyweight boxer who, um, sadly not alive anymore but me and my dad look the spitting image of each other now <laughs> and someone came up to me while i was filming on set um have a russell crowe movie which was quite funny uh, quite a sort of um, you know full circle and they thought i'd look the spitting image of my dad and was reading this article in a newspaper about my dad and, and what he was doing during the 1980s and next to this article of my dad was this was this slide about jen belcher's little piece that you know talked about Jem's life and I just got hooked by that straight away the youngest ever champion at 19 blind at 22 and dead by the time he's 30 and I just immediately thought you know research watch every boxing film I could I saw 150 boxing films from 1927 to now and just find something that was and just th 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 this just this story had all the elements of something different you know the birth of boxing how it began during this textured economical social time that was changing in lots of ways and I, I was just immediately hooked and then you know the weird thing started happening which is why you know this story is kind of um growing in in a, in a strange way i started writing it and then i was coming across court records and books and different things where you know they just mentioned bits on him because it, there was no book ever written on gem so it was just pieces of information from books and different sources of history and the first thing that hit me was, okay, he's the same weight, same, pretty much the same height, same size as me. Okay, that's that was one thing that kind of drew me in. Thought, okay, that's interesting. Um, then I find out his mum, his mum's name is Mary. My mum's name is Mary. Um, he fought Henry Pierce, who has the same last name as my dad. In um, Henry Pierce was from Bristol, and my dad was from Newport. So there's a weird twenty minute. <laughs> you know, connection there that could be a, a, a sort of linear in, in history in that sense. And then he died on my birthday, birthday. So Jem died on the 30th of July, which is my birthday. So all these things just started happening. And I just thought, God, this is crazy. I, maybe I should play this part. And maybe I should start learning to box. And <laughs> start learning to box. I know it's crazy. So, <laughs> so I started learning to box like you know, four, four or five years before, before anything started happening. And I think people just thought I was crazy. I was coming, you know, coming home with being bruised and, uh, you know, battered and ribs and nose and everything, just, just, you know, completely destroyed. And I remember my mum saying to me, like, what the hell are you doing? You know, people were saying to me, you're training for, you're training for a film. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if you're going to play the lead. You don't know if you're going to hit the finance. You don't, <laughs> you don't know anything, but you're going through all this, this pain. So there was like a weird, weird, um, Thing inside me that was telling me that I need to make this film and also play the part um, and you know it didn't hit me until I was doing a fight scene in Lithuania it's the end of the end of the film the fight scene we we're shooting in Lithuania and I remember walking on set that one day and I felt so it felt so right this was about 15 days into filming but it felt so right I felt so prepared you know I felt like I felt like sort of almost invincible I felt like I was the only person in the world that could that could be playing this part now because <laughs> The, the fight scene was so real, it was so brutal. I knew everything about the character inside out and I just felt really right. So I'm, I'm glad that I stuck stuck with it because, um, you know, it, I, th I feel like it was meant to be. So, so when you were, were crafting the story and making sure you got the bits that you wanted to tell and you're doing your research and everything, obviously it's, it's quite a short span. Like you say, like champion at 19 dies at 30 kind of thing. How did you, know what to put in there to craft and, and to to make a narrative for this film i think i mean the, in, a, in a weird way the, the thing about not having too much you know books or anything documented on him give us a little bit of freedom um 
on the creative side and i really wanted to you know have a business mind so i really wanted to put in the evolution of the sport as well so the film opens very much bare knuckle in a field with russell crowe and by the end of it it's it's gloves it's in a ring and it's more formulated rules of boxing and i think you know there was key moments in jem's life he got an accident to his eye which put him in uh, you know which, which ended up him going to prison and there was a there was key moments that we just picked on and focused on those moments you know him moving to london becoming champion learning how to fight all those things and it has a very ra rags to riches kind of story it's a very you know up and down um story in terms of jem's character and i think that's kind of representative of, of, of boxing and, and boxers you know boxers seem to have s some of the most textured lives and they have this immediate rise to fame and then a crash and then so it it kind of felt fitting in that sense um so the core and you know and, th and then you bring in the emotional side the, the core root and theme to the story is is jem basically wanting his mum to um you know support him and understand why he fights what he's doing it and you know kind of be by his side um you know w d during this during during him figuring out what's what's happening inside because there's, there's a lot of inner um problems and demons and things that he deals with which i th which i think as well is slightly different to a lot of the other films we see we always see especially boxing films we see them doing it for someone you know someone fighting for rocky fighting for adrian or someone fighting for their daughter or for their wife or whoever and this this is very much focused on gem understanding and coming to terms with himself um, with the mum as a kind of uh, you know important arm to the story as well so, so uh, a slight change of pace from from the questions i've had so far you said you've watched about uh, 127 boxing and fighting movies and whatnot and uh, were there any that have really given you the inspiration when writing this or when making it and side question to that top three boxing movies okay i mean i've probably seen i think i i, I think i stopped counting at like 140 150 <laughs> so i've seen them and i haven't seen any very 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 new ones because i just can't i can't i can't fathom it but you know i remember watching the ring alfred hitchcock's 1927 that that was really nice. really cool Nice. Somebody up there loves me. With Paul Newman was incredible. Um, there, there was mo there was moments and there was films which I was able to extract a little bit of information or so take something and go, okay, that's good. Maybe we can use that and modify it or bring that into play. Obviously, it had a very um, linear timeline of Gem's story. So there was conquest. Uh, uh, recommend for a con uh, conquest of a dream james cagney very old film nice. um and that was one of the only boxing films i could find which had him going blind from the boxing so um you know there was films like that which i thought okay that that was really useful to kind of understand or analyze how a boxing film tackled with losing his eye but i mean there wasn't just boxing films it was loads of films i mean you know even down to Barry Lyndon and Rio Bravo, Am Amadeus was a huge, huge reference, um, just because of the nature of the character and the story and the setting and, and the time frame. But um, uh, Kubrick did a film. Uh, what I found was that a lot of these famous directors and people that did really well started off or did a did a successful boxing film. Um, <laughs> Hitchcock, Kubrick. Um, you know, obviously you go to Raging Bull with Scorsese and stuff, but I think um, I really enjoyed City for Con Conquest. Mickey Rourke did a bunch of films as well, which had a boxing focus, which were really, um, really interesting. Um, I'm trying to think of others that really, um, really hit me. And some of the new ones are good as well. But I think, I think somebody up there likes me really. Um, that showed me how to, you know, create a boxing film that wasn't necessarily really heavy on the boxing and and you know if you watch somebody that likes me or paul newman i mean rocky Sylvester Stallone's completely ripped it off which is great i mean paul newman's character is called rocky he he talks like this and you know 
Stallone's just adapted that 20 odd years later. There was another film called Requiem for a Heavyweight, which I was really blown away by because it had Muhammad Ali at the beginning as Cassius Clay. And it opened with a boxing fight. And then it just went to this really hard hitting, you know, journey of this character, which wasn't really driven by boxing or fights. So I wanted to create something which obviously had the entertainment and, and the fights as a kind of screen, but what was behind that? What was, you know, once you delve in deeper, what have you got? Have you got, you know, a textured character? Have you got a, a family connection? What, what have you got? Have you got this inner, you know, this inner thing that, that each character is trying to say? And, and you put that into the time frame of the 1800s and the few other things that were going on. And that, that was the idea to kind of, kind of light up a new, I suppose, breed or a new sort of, um, you know, original piece that hadn't been seen before. And that's what baffled everyone. I used to go in and pitch it to sales agents and distributors and they all, t they all turned it down and said, nope, don't, don't understand. Why are you trying to make an 1800s boxing film? Well, because it hasn't been done before and it's, and it's new and original and fresh. Um, that, that didn't, that didn't click at the beginning with people. So <laughs> that's a kind yeah, of, I think that was that was kind of where I was going to go next because it is very much about the birth of boxing, which means it's it's kind of like a, a period piece. Um, and I kind of wondered, like, it, it sort of makes it a niche within a niche, if you know what I mean. And I did wonder, like, how easy or how hard that would be to get cast on board, get financing on board. And then there's the other side of it as well, is that there's film, film lovers like myself and everything like that are sticklers for a little bit of historical accuracy. How, how, how much did you beat your beat yourself over the head when it came to to historical accuracy? Oh, there's a couple of questions in there. Um, I think, you know, the the first the first part of your question, it was it was it was incredibly difficult at the beginning. Yeah, and it was incredibly difficult all through the end. <clears throat> I thought I had something that, you know. I would be called in by the studios or people would be like, pitch us, pitch us, give us an hour of your time, tell us everything. And it, you know, it was just 10 minutes in and out and just, they just didn't get it. You know, just no one got it at all. Um, I I firmly believed we had something special. I, I still believe there's a huge French franchise potential the same way that, you know, we could do a TV spin off in the same way of Peaky Blinders. There's a there's an open world boxing game that, that could come from this. There's there's so many things. There's training and VR videos. You've got to think of the the actual activity of training as well. Um, so I, I I always believed in the huge potential of, of a sort of franchise and what could come a prequel, a sequel. There's loads of stuff. We're, we're 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 right in the middle of a very textured time in history. You go a little bit back, and you can go to like a bit more of the the, the beginnings of boxing, where it's like you know, fencing and sword fighting first and then yeah. bare knuckle boxing. And you go a little bit forward and you start, you know, the, the first big fights and starts go global and the ring and everything. So we're kind of in the middle and we're trying to cover as much as we can. So in terms of being historically correct, like I said, most of it, most of it is historic, historically correct. Um, the, we, we were able to like I said, I was able to have a little bit of freedom. First of all, you, I was able to have a little bit of freedom because there were so many different things that was written by Jem that was even contradicting, even dates on his fights, <laughs> his yeah. age. I would read something that said he fought on this day and something that said, no, he fought on this day. So I knew back then, I knew then that, okay, there's, there's, there's different resources available telling us different things. Um, so you have to, you know, when you're making a film, you have to have a little bit of creative freedom uh, yeah. from, the, from the beginnings but it was quite you know it was quite a tight you know 95 page script that covered uh you know any sort of gem historian would be like okay they covered they covered the main aspects of his life um i think in terms of the second stage of historical accuracy you've got to remember when you bring cast on board they, you know, they always add their own. They always add their own <laughs> bit to a bit to their character. They always add their own take on things. And as a film is made, it just evolves, and things things naturally become more or less. And I suppose part of my job, not not just as the acting, part of my job was was trying to keep a, um, I suppose a lid, a controlled lid, on certain <laughs> things where people wanted to go off 
and say a bunch of things that that didn't need to be said or yeah. you know had already been said the day before but at the same time letting that letting that flow as well because you know when people <laughs> when the cast that we've got come up with ideas they usually they're usually going to be great um mm. so you know it's um it's a balance i suppose um of making it you know making everything work in that sense so so i've only so far i've only seen the trailer and uh, i'm really looking forward to it coming out it's coming out on amazon at the end of the month i can't wait to catch it and um, definitely going to be watching it but one of the things that really strikes me about this movie is the um the fact that you you haven't made it you know style and panache yeah it looks great and it looks fantastic but it also looks nice and gritty nice and realistic the punches look like they hurt you know like when it when it hurts it hurts how conscious were yourself and director daniel graham to to make sure that you weren't just having shots in there for the fight and that just look cool for cool sake if you know what i mean yeah i think um you know it it's it, we it, you know we it couldn't be clean and, and sort of fresh and just you know too polished because otherwise you're you're, you're misrepresenting history in a, in a weird different kind of way then you know that that's that's also and i think that the the nature of the story we wanted to get down and dirty with it a little bit and just show the dark side to that world and and, and it changes as we move into different locations and you know when we first go to london it's very very warm and very sort of tempting and, and orange and you know then the prison is very gray and dull and dark so you know some of the scenes and the and the moments allow you to um to work through that and see what fits with the time frame and, and what you're what you're trying to you know get across in terms of that but in terms of um what was the second part of your question just sort of like um, making sure that, oh, yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, look, hand, hand on heart, these these fight sequences you're going to see, are, 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 I think, are some of the best ever. I think, you know, we have we have a couple of different fights that do a couple of different things. Russell Crowe's fight at the beginning is quite entertaining and. and plus it's also got a bit of comedy to it and it's a bit of a yeah. you know it's a bit it's a bit grand and epic and there's your entertainment to kick kick you off and then we have a kind of raw brutal fight in the middle which is very kind of um it's it's um you can feel it you can hear it the, the creaking of the of the wood um it's open it's in a you know it's in the front of a outside daylight it's open in the front of a house so it's um yeah you can feel that and the end fight is 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 incredible i mean it, it's it's a it's me having a real fight with an ex-boxer ricky ricky chapman who's, who's who played an amazing amazing part because he wasn't a, an actor and stepped into this role as a um you know as a boxer and an actor and we just wanted it to be as real as possible so the end fight is you know the things that you think oh was that real or was that that feels it, it's that and like i said it, we've just gone way way further than, than i think any other film has in that sense i mean we we were absolutely battered <laughs> absolutely battered and screaming at each other come on give me more hit me harder hit me harder hit me full on come on getting back up getting hit doing it again come on hit me harder hit me harder you know it was it was really um it was really brutal i mean for the for the for the cast and the uh, background artists that were watching it was just you could just see the looks on their faces they were just like what the hell <laughs> going on i mean i don't know if you ever saw the um the footage on graham norton from creed of tony bellew hitting the actor and it's like a you see like a you see like a real you see like a one real punch and they warm up like this and then he goes mm. and they're like oh that's terrible i mean this is just you know, I'll send you. I'll send you the behind the scenes, and you'll just be like, "What the hell are you doing?" It was. So, it, so you guys yeah, super hurt each other. I like that. Yeah, man. We we, <laughs> we bruised bruised ribs. We were absolutely exhausted, um, hitting each other full on with horsehair gloves. That was part of the reason as well. So you know, going back to the historical context, gloves were kind of gloves were being used, but they weren't they weren't a thing 
of okay everyone's wearing gloves during this fight but again to, to, to allow us to make the the fight as real as possible and to match the story of the evolution of sport we use gloves um, right, right. so there's different things that kind of help and aid to you know each stage of the story so so one thing that i always kind of wonder is that when, when you're doing fight scenes like that and obviously they're they're choreographed and whatnot and how how long did you work with your your co-star in in getting that fight right and making sure that it hit the way it was supposed to it was tricky for me because i i had to learn about four or five fights and you know just because of my multitude of roles some of them were really prepped and some of them weren't so you had to kind of be a little bit inventive and creative on the day have a wonderful stunt coordinator who you know really helped bring the whole film together actually um yeah, steve dent he, he's done everything he's done loads of marvel films oh, yeah goes, that's he, a that's a name i know <laughs> yeah he goes way back to gladiator and, and um and titanic so he he's done loads of stuff in the stunt world as a stunt performer and a stunt choreographer yeah and he's a very very dear friend and you know he just helped bring it to life and i just told him i wanted to be as real as possible so there was a certain amount of stuff that was choreographed and, and rehearsed and, and some of the stuff we had a, a you know a nice period of time some of it worked really well not having too much time because it, it added that little bit of sponta, spon spontaneity and oh yeah. just got hit or shit that wasn't supposed to happen but um yeah i mean we you know we wanted to we wanted it to be a real, as real as possible obviously we didn't want anyone to get hurt but we understood that especially that end fight for example that you know that that just had to be full on um and we spent four days shooting it i think and yeah we had the end fight was the most it had the it had the most amount of real hits because it's the only fight that has gloves but it has a story to it it has you know one round signifies one thing another round signifies another maybe gem has one up and then then henry pierce has one up then they both are equal and one knocks the other one out and the other one knocks the other one out so there was a nice story building off the back of it um that you know ha I, I just really think has a has a story within itself i think if people just um really watch that fight you'll just be you'll, you know you'll be really hooked on it because it's a it's a really moving piece of uh, piece of work so so again you've had this film for for countless years you've been working away on it bubbling away trying to get it out there you finally got it made and everything like that um, you just mentioned that you play a multitude of different roles on this. Obviously, the actor, the writer, the producer. What is what's your favourite cap to wear on set? Um, I mean, look, acting is acting is the true love. It's always it's always been the true love, and I, I only really started producing and writing because you know I wanted to create my own stuff and make my own stuff that I could be in. Um, then I fell in love with writing because you know i was able to have control over the medium before you know before the filming producing is just <laughs> it's just horrendous yeah. i mean it's you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's hard it's just horrible dealing with like trying to get everyone in a room or everyone on set during the time of covid and and you know it, it was just it was just really really you know horrendous i think i did have to let down my hat on the producing a little bit when we started filming because I just couldn't, you know, I was filming 15 hours a day. So yeah. just couldn't, couldn't, um, you know, couldn't engage um, as much as I can. I was even signing documents like, you know, during, just after takes, I had no idea what to <laughs> sign it. Just like, yep, sign, cool. Got to go back to the, got to go back to the take. Um, I, I, because I come from a world where I've made so many short films and really analyze the industry and lucky enough to analyze the industry doing the stunt work I used to do and you know working on all these amazing sets and being able to learn oh what that person does what that person does when I started making short films and I was right I was the writer or I was producing or I was acting it gave me the experience to be able to know when to put down each hat so yeah. you know when I started filming this the producing hat had to really come off and and and, and I had to focus on the acting um and then at moments during filming the writing hat had to come back on and off because there was things that 
was being changed or someone wanted to say this or someone wanted to do that and it, and it couldn't for a specific reason or it could or someone just said matt you know because you're the writer what about saying this mm -hmm. um is that historically correct or is that would someone say that i've done so much research you know over, over time on yeah what was correct to say or what was right or what was wrong so it, it's a um I don't really know how to do it. If I'm honest, I don't really know how I do it. I just, I've just, I've just learned how to do it, and, I, and I'm, very, I'm very respectful of people's roles. And um, yeah, I don't quite know how I still do it. And, I, and I'm, you know, I have to. It, it nearly killed me. It really did. So I have to, um, I have to, you know, learn to to put put them aside in different roles because it's, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was painful. <laughs> <laughs> But it's made and it's coming out people are going to see it now one of the things that i read in the press release that got sent over to me um before we we did this was a statement that um to get this movie made and to to have the passion and the commitment to this you've sacrificed so much more than you could put into words um without getting too dark or too deep or anything like that what exactly did you mean by that and as a, as a second part of that question is looking back over the whole thing and now seeing the finished project is there any one thing that's happened or one thing in the movie that makes you think it was all worth it <laughs> oh god um <laughs> I, you know I, I, feel, I feel very fortunate in one way to be to be able to work with this incredible cast and, and bring something that i've been working on for so long to life um right now sitting here I, I don't think i can say yes <laughs> that was worth it because it was so <laughs> it was so painful um but you know if the film is a wonderful success and people like it and you know things come off the back of it which um which you know i hope they do and, and things things are you know already starting to move in that in that direction i'm definitely feeling a lot more um, upbeat and uh you know excited about it so I, I i hope that that happens and then you know maybe i'll go okay it was all worth it i think it was you know it was th there was so many challenges on this every 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 possible nightmare that you could think of being hit with <laughs> on an independent film yeah. you know trying to trying to work with a, a studio a-list cast we, we just got hit with we just got hit with and so many changes so many different emotions up and down you know rehearsing and learning all this amazing stuff that felt really great and then going to find out that you know we'd lost loads of money or we couldn't you know being told to shut the film down or this and that it was just a real mix of emotions and you know i i, I went through just a really tough time you know of just trying to keep this movie alive it, it, it i shouldn't be sitting here with a with a finished film it, it should have crashed because so many times it fell through and I just didn't give up and I kept on and you know that led to quite a lot of stress and I had you know anxiety attacks and loads of different stuff and my body was battered from the training my mind was you know physically and, uh, and emotionally drained so it was a really really you know exhausting experience on my whole body which I don't really know like I said I don't really know how I'm sitting here with a finished film um, <laughs> And if I had any other, if I had any other responsibilities or didn't have some of the support that I had, you know, I would have caved in a long time ago because it was just, you know, hit after hit after hit, like, you know, just no, can't do that. No, you know, Russell Crowe can't travel, so we can't lock that location. We have to move out of Wales. We have to, we have to go and film in Lithuania, but then we have to find a location for Russell Crowe. It was just, you know, every single challenge hit after hit, this person's left. We need to find this person. You know, everything was just crazy, and making it, you know, during during a time of COVID, it was quite, still quite relevant. Just made it that extra bit harder. You know, one of the big, um, I'm not afraid to say this, but one of the big hits, you know, sort of trying to film in Wales and make a load of make make the film in Wales. My dad's um, statue stands outside Newport, and we were in offices opposite the statue, and. We just couldn't get any support from Creative Wales, who, you know, are the government body behind supporting Welsh filmmakers and, and talent. And they basically said yes to me for three years and then said no when it came to it. But, you know, we did everything that we had to do 
to try and get them to say yes we hired everyone from wales i mean it costs us so much money and time and you know obviously being told that they're not going to support we were spending you know we were spending a lot of money there we were bringing russell crowe we were bringing ray winston and they just said no because i think they were putting money into star wars or some other right. major stuff right. that was just you know just part of the system so when you get hit with stuff like that in your own country in your own place it's a bit of a like oh you know why am i doing this kind of thing um and it wasn't a lot we were asking for you know peanuts compared to what um you know what they were what they were given elsewhere so it was just hit after hit movement ups downs yes no's <laughs> um you know <laughs> and it just it just became uh, incredibly tough um, in every in every sense i mean that, that's why i ask I, I don't want to get too dark or too deep or anything but i'm always so impressed because so many times over the last seven or eight years that I've been doing this podcast, I've been interviewing people, so many people that I've interviewed that have talked about the passion project or that film that they are going to make. And then for whatever reason, sadly, it just, it never comes to be. And this is one of those movies that when you first told me about it, well, the first time we spoke for Winter Ridge, like I had a sense of that movie is 100% getting made. And yet it's taken five years, but it's made and it's coming out. It's got a hell of a cast. It looks like you've done a hell of a job. So I wanted to ask that question because I think you deserve a lot of props. You've got this movie made and I can't wait to see it, man. Oh, it means a lot. Thank you. That's um, that's very kind. I mean, I, <laughs> Julian Glover quite often laughs and he says, I, you know, you told me about the film and I never thought you'd get it made. You know, I told him about it sort of eight years ago, I think. And he said, I never thought you'd get it made. He said, I laughed in my mind. And yeah, I said, yeah, OK, good, good luck, whatever. <laughs> um so um for people that actually believed I, I i would get it made that that's um that's nice to hear and you know it's 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 part of the story i want i want i want um i kind of want you know i want people to know i want people to i want to help people i i, I do not and i mean this really um you know from the bottom of my heart I, I i really wouldn't want this experience to happen to anyone else because it was it was really really tough um and you know i'm quite a strong-minded person anyway who can deal with stress and anxiety but it was even for me it was really really tough like really tough um so i think and i hope that that you know the story in the same way as as rocky you know rocky rocky's success comes from knowing that you know the, the film is great but also the success comes from knowing the backstory right of how it got yeah. made and how exactly. we never gave up so I hope I hope it kind of inspires people to keep going and, and try and you know make their dreams. But I also I also hope it inspires the industry to change a bit. I hope I hope it causes a bit of um, you know, disruption because there's just things in the industry that are not in place, which you know should be in place. Yeah. And if they're not in place, just say no or say you know what we don't have this or we can't have that. It's not always about money. Sometimes yeah. it's just support. Some people just need a bit of love and encouragement, and I wish people would just say no instead of like yes, 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 and then and then no. It yeah. you know it, it needs to open up a bit of um, transparency and honesty in the industry because otherwise, it, it you know these these films are never going to get made. Um, and I keep saying this to, to quite a few people. I said this to, to the beginning with sales agents who, you know, turned it down, and I just said I'm never going to be in this opportunity again. I'm never going to make a low budget independent film with an a-list cast that looks, <laughs> yeah. looks like it, that looks like it's been done by a mini studio it's never going to happen i'm never going to put myself through it again and it's never going to happen i'm never i'm never going to get russell crowe ray winston these people in a film of this scale again it's not it's not um it's not really been done before you know there's 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 two films that that come to mind and that's rocky and goodwill hunting and I'm certainly never going to do it ever again. So we need to we need to you know encourage people and, and change a bit of um, a bit of the I suppose structure of the of the industry um, to help people who have really good ideas and really good stories that need to be told. I'm absolutely with you on that one. Absolutely with you. It's a story that I hear too much of, and and I hate to hear it, but I'm glad to see that that this story's got a good ending. We're going to be seeing this movie very soon. It hits Amazon Prime the end of this month, I believe. Yeah, twenty second, twenty second July. 
22nd of July, so everybody set your calendar. We're all going to be watching it together. I might do a little watch party on Twitter, I don't know. Let's see. Um, but before we go, man, um, give everyone a, a little bit of an elevator pitch for why they should see the movie and, um, yeah, why they should watch it. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, it's 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 an origin story about the birth of boxing set in a time period where with all this textured historic um, economical social change with a lot of excitement a lot of ups and downs um, it's entertaining it's even got a little bit of comedy um, from, from the likes of Ray Winston and others <laughs> and it's just good it's just a feel it's just a feel good um, movie in the sense of you know the story and just and bringing back a forgotten hero you don't have to be a super you know you don't have to be a super excited boxing fan to watch this film there's um there's lots of things in it that appeal to lots of lots of various people and like i said the, the historical context and the period drama just just adds a little bit of um, a little flair to it so yeah it's um it's good enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> you, you you've got russell crowe you've got alcohol and you've got fighting i mean what what more could you possibly ask for <laughs> no, don't, 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 don't start on that the, uh, the, the the trailers trend for the first couple of days because the numbers just blew up and it was everyone talking about russell crowe fighting around the world for the oh my park. god from south park oh that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> at any point though the day at any point on set did you go up to him and say by the way this is this is going to be better than cinderella man uh, we, we did speak about cinderella man i mean yeah cinderella man is is a classic i forgot to mention it earlier but um, you know it's, it's a really great film um but no he was telling me about his stories of, of his training side of it but no, oh, nice. I, I didn't. I didn't have the confidence then <laughs> to say it's going to be bad, <laughs> man. Um, but you know, it's, uh... right, man. I am. I'm going to wrap this up now. But uh, first of all, um, what, what's what's next once this comes out, or is it just a case of making sure we get people to see this? And um, where can people find yourself on the uh, on the old social medias and whatnot? And uh, we'll start wrapping out there. Yeah, I think. I mean, at the moment, I'm. I'm looking at and exploring a few potential spin-offs, TV series, a female TV series, and a few things off the back of it. So I think there's there's a lot more of the history to be told, and there's a lot more you know, really interesting and cool characters. And I think if, if a studio or, or a big streamer really gets behind it, we can really do, you know, we can do the next Peaky Blinders or the next, you know, Sopranos in that sense. Just has that sort of that quality of characters and, and stories. Um, so I'm looking at that. There's a couple of other things. I mean, I, I really should be taking a break and sort of fixing my own, <laughs> my, own um, my own body. Um, but you know, we'll see. We'll see how this. We'll see how this um, is received and how it plays out, and uh, and just go from there. And, and at the moment, I mean, I came off social media a year ago because I was just crazy busy. But we're back on, back on through cap. Just mainly through Camelot films now. I'm on. I'm using Twitter a bit more, just warming back up into the uh, into the social media land. Once you come off it long enough, you um, you you kind of um, it's quite hard to get back on it. So um, you can find us all on Camelot Films, and we're you know we're releasing exclusive content. We're actually doing an NFT collection as well, and a few other key things nice. that's time along the way that's um, that's in relation to the film. So look out for that. And yeah, everything's just kind of uh, you know being being run and, and posted on, on Camelot Films. Well, Matt, this has been absolutely fantastic. I couldn't believe it when I um, when the email came through and everything. I was buzzing to see that the film had been made and that it was coming out and everything. But then I, I went straight back and, and I knew we were going to be chatting. So I, I went back through my archives and I was like, 2017 was the last time I spoke to Matt Hookins. That is mental. But uh, I am buzzing to see this movie's coming out. I can't wait to see what else you've got going on after this as well. And hopefully it gets received well and everybody watches it. And uh, we'll be doing everything we can over at Nerdly to uh, to push this out. Reviews, trailers, everything like that. We'll push out as much as possible. But more than anything, it's just great to speak to you, man. And it's great to see that you got this movie made. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. It's great to, great to speak to you again. And uh, thank you for sharing the love. <laughs>